Hello guys, I would like to welcome you to this week's Sunday School lesson. In this week's lesson, the pastor will share the book of Matthew, chapter 12, verses 22 through 32. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also, if you would like to donate to our new Bethel Baptist Church Ministries, you can donate any amount to P.O. Box 18661, Hattiesburg, Mississippi, and zip code 39404. Also, Cash App capabilities in the descriptions with the pastor's Sunday School lesson notes. God bless you guys, and enjoy the lesson. Hi. I'm Brother Lars Jordan, pastor of the New Bethel Baptist Church located at 27, 29 Oak Grove Road in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And today our Sunday School lesson for July the 9th, 2023 is the kingdom has come upon you. And our Bible scriptures today are taken from the gospel according to St. Matthew, the 12th chapter, verses 22 through 32. And we're in this quarterly theme now, the righteous reign of God. And we're still in, uh, we're in the unit of study of Jesus envisions the kingdom. He envisions the kingdom. And we go here and jump right over into the, the 12th chapter of the gospel according to St. Matthew, you know, talking about the righteous reign of God and, and, and Jesus envisioning the kingdom. And we jump into this, this chapter and we go to one of these accounts in here where we deal with one of those things that are kind of controversial in the scripture when you talk about it. You'll notice that a lot of commentators, uh, more, some taters are more common than others, they'll, they'll just skip right over it and, and, and kind of dance through it or kind of glaze over it because they really don't want to give you one side or the other of the picture. But the Lord talks about the unpardonable sin. He talked about the, the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, against the Spirit of, of the Lord. Now, we, we know that different things will come up at different times in the scripture and and we don't get to just glaze over. We have to, we have to uh, look at those things head on and, and deal with them just the way the Lord does. In this chapter, we'll notice that Jesus' teaching tactic, after this 12th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, Jesus would begin in the 13th chapter to, to start teaching in parables. He'll start fulfilling the prophecies so that they will hear and not hear. They'll see and not see because some were listening and only with their, with their ears and seeing with their eyes, but they weren't receiving it in their spirit. And the Lord would say that those things will have to change. He will tell his disciples in the, in the next chapter because in, in this chapter, the, the leaders, the religious leaders, the Pharisees, the, the scribes, the Sanhedrin, the people that were in the leadership position, they were having problem with Jesus being the Messiah, being the Lord of all, being the one that, the, that was promised, the, the anointed one, the, the, the chosen one of God, his only begotten son, the, the son of David. They had a problem with Jesus being that person. And if we just have a problem with something and we choose to willfully just not let it be, a, be that which we know it is, because these guys will not go into the, 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 this dialogue with Jesus without knowing who he is. Because remember, the Apostle Paul said they were first given the oracles of God. So the, the Jewish nation, they had the oracles of God and the Jewish leaders had it better than anyone else because they knew the word of God. They were the ones that taught the word of God. Nicodemus was called the great teacher, but I believe that he was a true disciple of the Lord. He begged, he was well, along with Joseph of Arimathea, begged for his body after Jesus' death. But still, there were some of the Pharisees, some of the scribes, that would not accept Jesus Christ being the Messiah. And because of their not wanting to accept him, they put out disinformation about him. And the disinformation amounted to blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. It was okay, and we'll deal with this, but I don't. I want us to know things right off the bat. We'll deal with this. It was, it was okay for them to blaspheme against or say things against the Son of Man. Because that was dealing with Jesus in his humanity. But when the Holy Spirit convicts the heart and says, this is who this man is right here. He is the anointed one. He is the one that God has sent to, to save the world from sin. When you reject that, 
Where is the hope of you ever being saved? If you have rejected and, and you have gotten to the point where God said that person's heart is heart and they will never accept the, the, the fact that Jesus is Lord of all, then you get to that point where that sin is unpardonable. You have willfully and defiantly re rejected the authority that has been put over you and, and God has led you directly to. And if you take a horse to water and he won't drink and he's thirsty, it's his problem is he, if he falls over. So that's, that's what's happening in this lesson today. Now, this chapter starts out in, a, in an interesting type way because it starts out dealing with the Sabbath. It starts out as Jesus he and his disciples were going through a field of, of, of wheat and barley, more than likely, and they begin to pluck ears and they begin to, to, to shuffle them around and they, they, they got some, some food to eat. And they were approached, uh, and Jesus was approached and said that, why are your, your, your disciples not uh, doing the law and, and they're working on the Sabbath day? And Jesus let them know that, have you not heard of what David did when he and his men hungered? How they went in and ate the showbread out, out, the, out of, the, out of the, the, the place of, of God? And, and how the priests, every Sunday, I mean every Saturday rather, they performed their priestly duties and, and they're all working. And then Jesus had to let them know in the, in the eighth verse of the first chapter, or first parts of this chapter, he said, for the son of man is Lord even of the Sabbath. He is the Lord of the Sabbath. How many of you will will have a, a your 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 animal fall into a pit after they s tried to set Jesus up there in the tenth verse when they bring a man with a withered hand? And how many of you will not go and save your animal out of the pit even on the Sabbath day, even on a on nowadays we on, on the Sunday? We'll, we'll, who will, who will not do what is ne needful and necessary? For your animal to survive and live, or your 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 family to survive and live, but they were in a pit. So the Pharisees didn't want him, but Jesus told the man to stretch out his hand, and they were they were upset about this. And the 14th verse of this particular chapter right here says that, and the Pharisees went out and held counsel against him how they might destroy Jesus. They wanted to put him to death. They wanted to kill him because he didn't adhere to their 39 ways that you could break the, the law of the Sabbath. They, they had come and summed it up to 39 ways that, that you could break the law of the Sabbath. And they had little trickery ways that they would try to be, beat the Sabbath when they would, uh, I will go to this place right here and I won't be traveling or journeying too far on the Sabbath day. They had little ways and, and loopholes in trying to, to beat the Sabbath. But Jesus let them know that he was the Lord of the Sabbath. He was a problem to them. So they were always at him and after him, in, even to the tune of when our lesson starts out today. These After th these things right here, then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil. That was one possessed with a devil. It says the devil, but we know this is a demon. This is that's how it is, it is worded there in the in the uh, NIV, the, the the King James version. But it is, it's talking about the demonic uh, demonic spirit. Then was one brought to, uh, brought to him one possessed with a devil, blind and dumb, colon, and he healed him, insomuch that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. There's a lot of things said right here in this 22nd verse about this particular man, but we are to focus on the on on, on what's, what's really going on here at this time. Now, it, when they brought this man to him, it was one that was possessed. This man was possessed with a devil. And for something, so someone to be possessed, that means that this person, this thing or it has occupied this person. Their inner being has occupied their inner being. It is in total domination of this person and it is a control of them. It is controlling them from within. This is why we tell you, and, and you know because of what, what the Apostle Paul said, that a, a believer cannot be possessed. Now, you say, well, why did that believer do that particular thing over there? Yeah, I didn't say that the believer can't have the Satan and his demonic spirits hovering around him. 
and trying to whisper in their ears little things to do, but they won't possess that person because darkness and light will not have fellowship. Once light comes in, darkness has to flee. And Paul said that they don't have any fellowship at all. What fellowship does darkness have with light? So uh, darkness will not go into where you are if you have the light of Jesus Christ living on the inside of you in the person of the Holy Spirit. So they brought one to him. Then this person was possessed with this devil. This person was occupied. This person was dominated and in total control of this demon possession. If you forget that, the rest of this might be might be something that you don't grasp the whole thing about. Uh, you you need to get the the part that he was a he, this man was possessed with a devil. But that wasn't his only problem. But it was the main problem. He was possessed with a devil. He had a, he had a trio going on here. A trio, uh, three instruments playing the same tune. And then one gets off key. You don't go try to get the two that are playing on key back on key. You get you deal with the one that is the real problem in the in the situation. If one is singing off key, if you have a trio and three of us are, are singing, as my dad used to look at us, he will point to the one that is off. He didn't point at the ones that were singing the right key. So it, it, there. They had a trio going on here, and the problem was the first part of it. The first part of it was the devil. He had a dem demonic spirit living on the inside of him, and uh, which put him in a position where all three of these things were a disadvantage to this per particular person right here. He had a devil. He had a demonic spirit living on the inside of him. The second thing, he was blind. He couldn't see. And the third thing was he was dumb and he couldn't talk. And chances are, if he was dumb and he couldn't talk and he was blind and he couldn't see, he may not have even been able to hear. So And, and so he was in a, in, in a bad predicament at this particular time. It, he, he was uh, possessed with a demon. Possessed occupied, totally dominated by this demonic spirit. If we don't, if we, we need to, to grasp that part of this, he was totally dominated by this demonic spirit. And, and this would be the big miracle that happens in, in this man's life. This man, when, when he was blind, he was blind and dumb, also possessed with the demonic spirit. After the colon, it says he healed him. He healed this man in so much that the blind, the, the blind and dumb man both spake and saw. He healed the man. Now, in the healing there, we can't miss the fact that he healed the worst part of it. He came and he fixed the problem. The person that was singing off key, he pointed at that person. Or he told the demonic spirit, you got to go. Because you are the reason that he is, he is uh, blind and dumb. You are the reason that he's blind and can't speak. You are, you are the, 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 the whole reason. So we need to re deal with the root of the problem. The root of the problem is the demonic spirit living on the inside of him. Sometimes we go trying to deal with people and, and, and put them in front of other people to, that we spent a lot of money on and we hadn't prayed to the Lord to deliver them from what, they are, the, what the real problem is. We want to look past it because we don't want, like to believe that there are demonic spirits in and all around us, even in this time. And, and, and But a believer can't be possessed. But if that person is not a believer, they can definitely be possessed and be totally occupied by that demonic spirit. Now, we, we, we see that his condition was totally changed when Jesus healed him. When Jesus healed him, it went to in so much that Jesus didn't say, now I want your eyes to open and I want your mouth to open. After he healed him, the mouth opened and his eyes opened also. He was able to speak and he was able to see. But I believe he was also able to hear. Now he's able to hear. He's not in a Helen Keller situation anymore. He's in a position where he sees, hears, and, and knows just what's going on at this time and, and can actually speak about those things. So it, it, this man, it, this was a wonderful healing that these people saw. A wonderful miracle that these people saw. This was one of those things that I heard one say that was even greater than raising someone from the dead because this man's trio had him in a position where everyone would look at him and said, there's no way that his condition can be changed because he has this trio, this, this demonic spirit. He's blind and he can't speak. So now all of those things are fixed. He's, he's able to do all of those things again and the demonic spirit is gone. So look at what happens to the people. Now, and all the people were amazed and said, is not this the son of David? The people were looking at this. They, they were seeing the things that were happening at this time. 
Now at this time, the Pharisees, uh, they have gone and, and they had this meeting together there in verse 14. They had this, this council that they had called together so that they can d decide that th this man, Jesus, need to be put to death. We can't have a man talking to us the way that he talks to us, the people looking up to him the way that they're looking up to him. And while they were gone, this particular miracle happened. This particular thing happened right here that these people started looking to this man, Jesus, and saying, wait a minute. Is this not the man that we heard about that would be the Messiah, the son of David? We've heard enough about him to know that it will be a descendant of David that would be the son of God himself, the anointed one that comes from God, that God sends to redeem us all, to, to save us all. So they knew enough about that. This would be a problem for the Pharisees. This would be a problem because this man would be, uh, these people would be saying this is the Messiah. That's basically what they were saying was they, when they said, is not this the son of David? Is this, is this the son of God? Is, is it possible? Could it, could it possibly be the son of, the son of David uh, or the Messiah himself? Verse 4, 24 says, though, but the Pharisees heard it. Somebody went back and let them know about this other healing. They were there with the withered hand because they were trying to set Jesus up with the man with the withered hand. And Jesus did heal that man's hand on the Sabbath day. But now they've, they've heard about this. This man had a demonic spirit. This man couldn't see and this man couldn't talk. And now this man has been totally healed. The, the, the demonic spirit is gone. The man can, can see, hear, and talk again. All of these things, all these elements are falling in place for this man. The Pharisees heard about it, and they said, this fellow doeth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. Now, they wanted to squash or, or kill or, or totally get rid of any faith or praise that Jesus was about to receive. If they had faith in him, they would trust in him and they would be saved. And then, so these guys that were supposed to be teaching them about the Messiah, about the son of David that was going to come on the scene, they were teaching the opposite thing. They were teaching that this man wasn't who he said he is. And that's a problem already. Paul, uh, James said, the brother of Jesus said, let not, let not there be many teachers because in, 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 in the word, in many words, There'll be some, some falseness in, in the making of words. He said, and the teacher will receive the greater condemnation. When you go out there and you falsify things just because, and you know the truth, it's worse than anything it, it, when you, you're messing the people of God up and, and giving them false information. But the Pharisees, they, when they heard about this healing, it disturbed them. And they said, this fellow is doing this by the power of the devil. This man, that this, this demon-possessed man, this, 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 how, how in the world could he do that? It had to be the power of the devil. He cast out devils. Uh, not he, This fellow do have not cast out devils, but by the power of Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. He's, he's using the, the, the devil to cast out the devil. He's using Satan to cast out Satan. That's where Jesus would go to with this. And, and, and you know, it, it's amazing because G Paul would talk about the Roman people, the leadership of the Romans, the, the brethren in the, in the Roman family, the even people that he probably came up with and, and were pharisaical with them at one time. They were different than these guys right here. They were different. He, he, he said, brother, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear the record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Here's the problem. They are being ignorant of God's righteousness, have gone about to establish their own righteousness, and have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. These people were not ignorant. These people went into this thing willfully and defiantly. They were not ignorant in what they were doing. These were Pharisees. They had the word of God. They had. They were first given the oracles of God. They were the leaders. They were the ones that were supposed to be teaching the people. Nicodemus, known as that great teacher. So they were the ones that were supposed to be teaching the people. I was wondering where Nick was when all of this was going on. He, he had to just kind of cover his face because some of these things would be just too hard to let go. Before they could gain any faith in Jesus, they wanted to get rid of this, this, this faith that they would have in him. The, the leaders, the religious leaders, the ones that were looked up to said, this man is just doing this by the power of the devil. How awful is that? When we start attributing the things of God to the devil himself, 
the things that God is doing through the person of the Holy Spirit to the devil himself. How bad is it? Jesus is going to tell us how bad it is. Verse 25 says, and Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand, colon. In other words, Jesus got some more to say on this. Come, come uh, To put this compoundedly, compiling more on. So at first he's ta he talks about the civil war that goes on. It, he said Jesus knew their thoughts. He knew what these guys were thinking at this time, all the time. Because not only was he the son of man and all man, but he was also all God and he was still God. He was still the second person in the Trinity. So he still knew what they were talking about, what they thought about what, and it, so at this time he, he tells them every kingdom that is divided against itself is brought to desolation or destruction. It will be destroyed. It will implode. It will destroy itself from within, pull it, pull the walls in on itself. And, 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 and every city, he didn't leave it right there. He brought it on home to us. He surrounded us with it. Then he brought it straight on up in the house. He said, in every city, our house divided against itself, he said, shall not stand, shall not stand. Yes, it might be crippling alone, but it's not really standing if, 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 if things are divided against themselves. He, he, he brought it, that he brought the house right on into this, the home front right on into this. But look at look at what he said though. Again, just 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 for for reasoning's sake, for for grasping the thought of its sake, he said every kingdom divided, not some of them. He said every, and then he said every city or he mean the 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 thought is every house, all of them. None of them gets away from this. All of them that are divided against themselves will not stand or they will be brought to destruction or desolation. Not some of them, every one of them is what Jesus is saying there. If you say that I'm lying, then you read the word of God because it's right there in front of you. Unless you got one of those friendlier translations and they tried to get that out of there and they said some kingdoms divided against themselves or brought to desolation. But the word, the word of God that I'm reading and all the translations that I've read, they're saying, they're saying the same thing. The verse 26 says, and if Satan cast out Satan, Jesus is making his case here, still making his case. He said, if Satan is casting out, is ca cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. Jesus just said that that kingdom that's divided against itself is brought to desolation. That house, that city, Brought to will not stand, brought to desolation. He, he said, if Satan is brought to get, uh, divided against himself, how then shall his kingdom stand? D do you hear is what Jesus basically was saying to them. Let me repeat what you were saying in thinking in your mind back to you. Think about the absurdity of what you're saying right now. Think about how, how this sounds, how this really sounds. Hit Satan kicking Satan out. How, how does that really sound? Satan kicking himself out of his own kingdom, out of his own business, trying to stop his own thing from happening. And all he was from the beginning was a liar. What, 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 what he's going to do? He, all he's ever been was a liar. He's going to go start telling the truth. He's not going to be divided against himself. He's going to keep on lying because he's Satan. Satan is not going to destroy his own kingdom. So Jesus wanted them to hear the absurdity of what they were thinking even at that point. So he goes on with this also. And he said, if I, and if I by Beelzebub, by the prince of the, of the devils or the, or the prince of the, of, of the demonic world, cast out demons or devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Uh-oh. Therefore, they shall be your judges or they will prove my point. This is what Jesus is saying there. Walk up to your sons and that, that, that have been casting out demons, that's exorcising people and, 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 and demonic spirit has left them. What are you going to tell them? That they, they cast out that demonic spirit by the power of Beelzebub, the prince of the demons? Did, did they do that? Or are you going to tell your, your sons and daughters that? Are you going to, are you going to say that they were using Satan's power to cast out the demonic world also? Well, your own children will prove that you are wrong. They'll let you know that you are wrong in that if you went to them and said the same thing. 
Now, Jesus was not finished with this yet. He, he had a little further to go. Verse, verse 28, he said, but if I, kept, if I cast out devils or dem demons by the spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. Wow. If I cast out the demonic spirits by the spirit of God, using the spirit of God that was given to me when I came into this life as uh, a, 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 taking on a human body. I, I, I was God already, but I have the Holy Spirit working with me just as my father has the spirit right there with him all the time. We, we use each other. We are, we are, uh, we're, we're a trinity. And you telling me that, that, that the power that I use, I'm saying that I'm using the spirit, the power of God to cast out this, mon this demonic world. And you should know that. And you should understand that the kingdom of God has come near to you, is right here with you all the time. Why should you know it? Because you are Pharisees because you have the oracles of faith, because you have witnessed some of these very miracles happen. You have, you have the law and you have the prophet. You know the things that were said about the Messiah. You know right here, and this is why it'll be so hard for someone, even in our day and time, to commit this blasphemy of the, the, the Holy Spirit because you, you really can't do it because Jesus is not standing there in front of you the way that he was standing in front of them and they were attributing his power, the miracles that he worked these, the, the, the power that he worked these miracles by to Satan himself, to the, the, the prince of the demonic world. So, so but Jesus is letting them know that if I did this by the power of God, then God is near you. The kingdom of God is right here with you. Jesus is right here with you. The Messiah is right here with you. What are you going to do with him? That's basically what he was asking him at this point. If, if Jesus, if, if God's son is right here with you, you have been taught about this person right here. What are you going to do with him now? Now you know that he is near. And if you reject him, it's just your defiance. If you reject him, it's just your willful disobedience of accepting him as your Lord and Savior. If, if you reject him because the kingdom is near, God is near, is come near to you. Verse 29 says, or else how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his house? Oh, interesting. Jesus gives his own story to try to help them understand what's going on. Or how else can one enter into a strong man's house? The strong man here in this particular instance is Satan, the, the, the ruler of the demonic world. It, it's Satan. The, 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 the house that he has, the, he's been given the title deed to the earth. There in the Garden of Eden, when Adam ate of the forbidden fruit, he was given the title deed to the earth, the prince of the power of the air. That, that is Satan. And, and in this world, in this evil realm that he is controlling, there is sickness. There is a demon possession. There, there is death. There is lying. There is stealing. There is all types of, of persecution and abuse. All of those things are happening, but one of them has been dealt with completely. And that is the death. Death has already been taken care of. So th that one right there, Jesus has already defeated. So the, the, the strong man the, is, is Satan. His house is the all of these demonic things that are happening, all these evil things that are happening all around us. And his goods are his demonic entourage, his, his demonic demons, these people that are, that are around him. And that's, that's his goods. That's his property. And, and in order to be able to do, to spoil his goods, now, actually spoil them or make them to where they're inoperable anymore. First, a person have to bind the strong man, have to bind Satan. Well, there's only one that is strong enough to bind Satan. We find out that he, he and Satan are going to war at one, at, at one time, but it won't be a battle. It'll only be Jesus speaking with his words, just as he created this, the heavens and the earth. He'll, he will just speak things, speak it, and, and it'll happen just the way he said. And then he, Satan will be cast away forever. Except the one first, bind the strong man. Bind str Satan. Somebody stronger will have to bind the strong, strong man. And then he will spoil his house. He'll spoil his house. Then he'll go in and destroy his property. 
How is that? Every time Jesus cast a demonic spirit out of a person, every time he got, went to a person and, uh, and, and cast out a whole host of demonic spirits from that person, he was taking a little bit of, bit of Satan away from him. He was binding Satan a little bit more until finally here there in Revelation, the 20th chapter, the 10th verse, he'll be bound forever and thrown into the lake of fire where he will be there forevermore. And, and so his, his house is being bound every time a demonic spirit is taken down. Every time a person is resurrected from the dead. Every time a person accepts Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, they're being resurrected from the dead. Because Paul said in the second chapter of Ephesians, we were born and we were dead in trespasses and sin. When we born, came into this life, we were already under the federal headship of Adam. And because of Adam, all sin and none of us get away from it. And so now we need Jesus Christ to be, we need him and accept him to be under his federal headship and not be under the, the curse that Adam was under. We'll get off him under the curse when he will accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And then verse 30 says, he that is not with me is against me. Ooh. And he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad, the Lord says here. that Now, there, there is no neutrality. Either you are with him, saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. And I'm, not, I'm not talking about anything crazy. I'm just talking about if you are saved, you have already been sanctified. I, oh, oh yeah, you say, well, wait a minute. I got many mistakes and I'm doing many things. Well, down here on earth, you're doing those things. But one day there will be a time when this corruptible will put on incorruption. You won't be battling and wrestling with that thing anymore because all of these things will, will be shed away from you. We, this, this mortal will put on immortality. You won't be even, you'll be brought even from the presence of sin, not just the power and the penalty of sin, but you'll be taken away from the presence of sin. So you, you, you say well, there is no neutrality. Either you're with him or you're against him. And if you are, if you're with him, then you're gathering, you're, you're, you're helping him harvest. You're helping, you're trying to help him bring, bring in. But if you are not with him, then you're scattering. And that's what Jesus was saying to these Pharisees and scribes at this time. He, I mean, the Pharisees at this time, he's saying that you're, I'm harvesting. You're trying to scatter. You, I told them, they saw the, 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 the miracle. They, they believe, they started to believe. They started to believe because they're seeing different things happening. I'm able to speak and teach with them in the temple. Faith is coming by hearing and their, their faith is getting strengthened by what they see. And you're going to them and say, I'm doing it by the power of Beelzebub. So you're scattering. You're not helping them to come in. You're trying to hurt them. If, if someone is teaching a, a, a different way that, that I am, but they are teaching Jesus Christ died, was buried and rose again and wants to save them, then I'm not against that person. Why would I be against? We shouldn't be against each other. Just because I was raised up on a different side of the fence you was, if we're both teaching Jesus, we're, we're, we're with Jesus. We're not against him. We're not scattering. We're trying to bring people in. Wherefore, Paul, uh, Jesus says here, v Jesus speaking here in for the for 31st verse, he said, wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. Colon, let me stop there for just a second. Because this is one of the greatest promises in the scripture. He said all, and all is the same in the Greek and the Hebrew. All it means all, all sin." All iniquity, all transgression, as I told you a while back, transgression is when you saw the sign and it says do not enter and you went in anyway, the way that we used to go into an old man's pastor and go out there fishing and hunting. We, we would crawl through the part of the fence where it says no trespassing. We knew we were doing wrong, but, but we, and, and saw the sign you saw, and you still, you see the sign on the side of the cigarette cart that says this causes cancer, but yet you stick that thing in your mouth, but it doesn't stop you from being saved. It's, many saved people are going to be in heaven and have, have, have lost their life because of what the cigarette is called. So trespass, eat all manner of sin. And blasphemy and talking against Jesus Christ, all of these things, because Paul was fighting against Jesus, all these things will be forgiven. Paul was forgiven. They'll be forgiven, men. This is a great promise, but there is a colon. 
which means that there is further explanation on what we're trying to portray here. He said, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. Wow. The blasphemy of the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. This is that defiant irrelevant. This is just going against, it willfully going against the will and purpose of God. And we don't want this man Jesus to rule over us. Don't want this man Jesus to be called the Messiah. I would, might lose my position on the Sanhedrin council and we may not even have a need for the Sanhedrin council if this man Jesus is ruling and reigning. If we, we might lose our prestigious job. People may not look up to us the way that they do. So we got to keep putting out the disinformation about this man Jesus saying that instead of be, him being the son of David or the son of God, the Messiah, the one, the anointed one to come into the world to save man from their sin, we'll just tell him that he's doing all these things that he's doing by the power of Beelzebub, the prince of the demonic world. So, so, so they were going out spreading dis disinformation. Now, it, there is, is, is something that's interesting going on here. The main reason why the Pharisees in, the, in, in this would, won't be forgiven of this particular sin is because it was a willful, defiant act. It wasn't out of ignorance. As we said, uh, those that had a zeal of God, it wasn't out of ignorance because these guys, they had the knowledge right there in front of them. They, they had everything they needed right there in front of them. These were the leaders. These were the leaders of the, of the, of the people of Israel. They, they had it right there in front of them. They wouldn't be forgiven because they had never come to the terms, in fact, that they need to ask for forgiveness because anytime they ask for forgiveness, they'll be proven that Jesus Christ was really the Messiah and they lied about him previously. The reason people don't want to admit, admit to disinformation is because it will prove that they lied about it in the first place. That's, that's, that's the reason we, that, that, that disinformation is just spreading around broadly right now and going wherever it wants to go because some people, everybody is not deceived. These guys were, were, weren't deceived. They weren't the, the, tricked by the devil. They went into this with their eyes wide open. They, they were defiant in this. They were, these, these were people that, that would, in the next verse, he said, whosoever speak a word against the son of man, it shall be forgiven him, colon. But whosoever speak it against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. This person will never be saved that falls into this right here, that goes, walk, don't fall into it. They walk directly into it with their eyes wide open. If a person willfully and stubbornly refuses the conviction of the Holy Spirit to forget the, to, for the forgiveness of their sins through the person of Jesus Christ, that rejection is an unpardonable decision. It cannot be changed. God will help them even to true up their heart. Just as he did Pharaoh, the Bible said that God hardened his heart. That if you decide that there's no way that Jesus Christ is going to be the Messiah of your life, you don't want him to be the Messiah of the people's life because you have put out disinformation now. You don't want to turn around and say, well, wait a minute, I was wrong in saying that. Your pride won't let you go to the point where you get things cleared up, then you are denying that the kingdom is all around us and Jesus has already came into the world and he's right here with us in the person of the Holy Spirit. So the kingdom of God has come upon you. What are you going to do with him? Are you going to accept him? Or are you going to be willfully defiant of him? This particular sin can't happen, but you can fall into an unpardonable sin if you never accept Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit pricking your heart all the time and you never accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior so that he can forgive you of your sins. You don't have to remember every sin so you can go down on your knees every day and ask the Lord to forgive you. Once you accept Jesus Christ, all of your sins past, present, and future have already been forgiven. They've already been taken away. That takes all the pressure off of you. You should ask for forgiveness. That's for fellowship. But, but, but once you accept Jesus, he's forgiven you. He's taken care of that thing and you can never fall into an unpardonable sin. You will be in heaven. Even if you backslide, he has you redeemed to the end because you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise 
His Holy Spirit is inside of you, sealing you to the day of redemption. Father God, we do thank you today for the study of your word. And Father, we pray that this word will simmer on our hearts and minds and help us to not be people that are willfully defiant, walking away from the Spirit's conviction and not accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Father, we do pray that you will search our hearts, forgive us of sin. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining the Sunday School Lesson Review. Hope to see you next week. God bless you all.